Uh, good evening, brothers. Uh, welcome to the uh, the land uh, here at the 76th uh, 12th district meeting. Uh, this evening, uh, brothers, we've got a great program uh, prepared for you. Uh, we've got uh, Brother Grand uh, Blunt and uh, Brother Love, uh, who are going to be doing a presentation this evening. Uh, Brother Brother Grand and uh, Brother Love, why don't you guys come, go ahead and come on the camera? Now, the Lamp is a uh, is a is a, a new program that uh, we're extremely excited about. It's an opportunity for us to really get back to the history of Omega. I remember talking to the to the second vice uh, DR about this uh, this program, and he said, "Oh, oh yeah, brother DR. I guess it's it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like the Groove, but no with no chicken and beer." Uh, brother Grand, I'll explain the Groove to you a little later on, just just so you. But but there's definitely no chicken and beer tonight. Uh, but there's going to be a lot of really great information uh, really shared. So uh, I want to thank brothers for tuning in uh, this evening. Oh, and by the way, I'm not going to tell you who I am because last night I told you who I was and, and the first vice district representative said, well, Brother Dow, this is it's an all Omega session. If they don't know who you are, then there's a problem. So, uh, so I'm not going to tell you my name, but uh, brothers, please sit back, relax, enjoy, and uh, take, take in this great uh, bit of Omega history and uh, 12th district history. My brothers, let me turn it over to you. Peace. Thank you very much, Brother DR. Again, brothers, my name is Brother Carl A. Blunt, 32nd First Vice Grand Bosses, Mega Sci Fi. And um, I am co chairing this with Brother Dale Love, who is your 12th District History and Archives chairman. Uh, we have about an hour, uh, so we're going to try to get as much information as we can. We still have time for a question and answer period and a little bit of a, of a brain bow test at the end. Um, we're going to go through at a steady pace because it's tough, as you know, a student of history, how to cram everything in into about an hour or so. So let me start again by thanking you for, for joining. Now, as students of history, let me preface this by saying, you know, history is pretty much subjective. Uh, it's one person's interpretation of events. So putting together Omega history before 1947 was pretty tough for out here in what we now call the 12th district. You have to use a lot of inductive and deductive reasoning as a researcher. And even though we've tried to fill the gaps with that, everything has been documented and it's no Betty stuff. It's nothing we've made up or nothing our profite told us. This is information Brother Love and I and other members of the committee have turned up and have background documentation. Uh, historical um, information and data from California prior to 1947 is pretty sparse because there was only technically one chapter here in the so-called 12th district in California. And as Brother Love will tell you as we go on, he'll talk about the men who were the district representatives who managed us from states far, far away, uh, Louisiana, Texas, Oklahoma. So you'll see when we finish this presentation about the perseverance that the brothers in Lambda chapter uh, have shown us and also uh, up to 1947, uh, where we were just out here for almost 20 some years with no basic nurturing. Um, so let me start um, with talking about the, um, the shield. Um, can we get the first slide, please? Brother Love, you may come on as well. Um, you notice below the Escuchan, we have the 12th district logo. Um, Folks ask me, how did that come about? And those who've been around, that's but this is the, the tightest district logo I've ever seen because uh, my administration came up with it. So that's pretty cool. But it does have some facts to it. It's based on a Greek Parthenon. If you notice the top, the triangle, the isosceles tile triangle is called a pediment. It is the, it is the crowning feature of every piece of Greek architecture building you go into. It tells a story. There usually is a fresco in the middle of the pediment. It talks about what goes on inside. That's where we place the Greek letters uh, Q sci-fi. Um, you look at the first chapters up there. They are the first 20 chapters that comprise the 12th district. Again, a very important number for us. So when you look at this, it's more than just a logo. It's a statement. You look at the chapters on the bottom. Those are the chapters that the foundation that built the 12th district. Even though the top 12 were the first ones, the ones on the bottom were the ones that built. and um, it's gone through some, uh, some, some irritation. Brother Keith uh, Neal managed it for a while. Terrence Hamilton managed for a while. And now updating it is um, Daryl Love's uh, um, responsibility. He's done a great job with that as well. You'll also notice that the, uh, the X represents the 10 for the 12th. 
it has two arrows. And that's going to remain a mystery uh, for you until a later date and time. Folks ask me all the time, what do those two arrows represent? Well, you know, I, you'll find out about that later on. Let me shift over to the name, the lamp. The folks say, why is this called the lamp? Because you look on the shield, the lamp of knowledge. You know, you fill your lamp with oil, you fill your lamp with knowledge, you fill your lamp with history. So that's why this is called the lamp. Um, next slide, please. This presentation was actually presented in 2019 at our Fire Order History Weekend, which many of you participated in. Uh, Jonathan Matthews was on our committee, our International History Archives Committee, did a tremendous job in doing some research for us. So again, a researcher is like an artist. Uh, you want folks to know this is your work. So Brother Matthews was kind enough to give us your permission to show this again. And as we move forward, our Brother Love is gonna take over, go through things step by step, talk about the chapters. He's gonna talk about the men that are responsible for managing the 12th district as we not only became established, but we became involved. So having said that, Brother Love, I will turn it over to you. Thank you very much, Brother Graham Blunt. And congratulations on your recent pudding becoming a PhD. Bro. Scholarship, Q. Next slide. Okay, so we're gonna take you on a journey of the fraternity expanding to the West. We're gonna start with the establishment of a number of different chapters, uh, and then eventually towards the establishment of a district system, and then evolution of the West Coast being involved in different districts along the way to end up in our now massive and, 12th, and progressive 12th district. So it all starts with the establishment of Theta Chapter at the University of California, Berkeley uh, back in 1920. We learned this from or, uh, our articles within the Oracle, uh, the Negro Star newspaper, and the Alpha Phi Alpha Sphinx uh, periodical. So all three of those and others um, kind of document this as being a, a fact of a new chapter being established for Mega within California at UC Berkeley. Uh, next slide. In 1922, so not soon thereafterwards, um, this is the first evidence of the deactivation of that chapter uh, at UC Berkeley. So it was not a long lived chapter um, and you don't see a lot written about it. And so that's why I'm sure many were not privy to the fact that it was a chapter that was established uh, that did not uh, sustain a long presence on, on the West Coast. Um, again, in the Oracle in 1922, we can see that not only was Theta inactive, but also was IOTA chapter. Um, later on in 19, um, sorry, December of 1922, Theta chapter was activated at Wiley College. And if you look at uh, their uh, history and their model, they'll say that they're the first chapter established west of the Mississippi. Now, technically, uh, they're not accurate, right? You know, they're the current chapter, but the first chapter to establish west of Mississippi would have been the data chapter at UC Berkeley. Uh, next slide. Uh, let me... Oh, yes, I'm sorry, brother. Brother, that's okay. I just, okay, I just want to. I just want to mention too. You know, I, um, you noticed a couple of slides before when they talked about the establishment of data chapter at UC Berkeley. It also mentioned Biddle College, which we know now as. Um, um, Row chapters Johnson C. Smith. It also mentioned Phi chapter established at Talladega College in, um, in Alabama. So we all know that Phi is now University of Michigan. So some of our research about Theta chapter showed us that, that Phi and Theta kind of suffered the same fate. Um, Phi chapter at Talladega was authorized by the headquarters. They made a line. The school then rejected it, said, hey, we do not have any fraternities up on this campus. So they sent the chartered back, it was recalled. So you had a bunch of guys that were made and there was, oh, for years and years and years, uh, trying to figure out if they were legitimate or not. Um, finally, that was worked out. They finally moved that, that five chapter to Michigan and we received a letter from, from Talladega College back in the 1920s saying that we are sending this charter back. Uh, same thing with Cal Berkeley, even though we don't know exactly what happened, a scouring of the Bancroft Library, looking at all the information, it seems as though the same thing was happened at Cal Berkeley. The fraternity uh, uh, chartered a chapter there, but for some reason, the school sent it back and it was recalled. So that's one of the things we want to mention 
on some of our deductive reason how we happen to to fill in the blanks. Okay, Brother Love, back to you. Great point, Brother Blunt. And, and, and to that point also just to expound a little bit more, um, that establishment of the chapter at Theta was also the Omega's first um, recognition of being a coast to coast, Atlantic to Pacific coast uh, present. It was the first fraternities they ever have that kind of uh, broad span across the entire United States. Um, at that time, we had roughly 15 chapters and about a thousand members within the fraternity uh, writ large. Um, later on, um, that chapter um, got moved over to, I'm sorry, at this, around the same time frame in 1920, uh, we also see Lambda chapter was initially established at Northbrook, Virginia. And so that was the first use of Lambda as a chapter also to later on come on to the West Coast that we'll discuss later on. So thank you for those, those great points for the one. Another mention too about Lambda, we feel that another reason the Theta chapter was not nurtured at Cal Berkeley and Lambda was because Lambda almost functioned as an intermediate chapter. Even though it was established on the campus of USC, if you look at the roles back in the early 40s and the 50s, it was dominated by graduates, outstanding graduates um, that, that were part of Lambda. So we feel that that intermediate slash graduate type um, um, embracing kind of helped Lambda stand up on his feet and maintain, whereas it, it didn't work for, um, it didn't work for, uh, for Theta. The chapter was, re the charter was recalled. Okay, Brother Love, sir. And also to figure back on your point about deductive reasoning, uh, brothers, as Brother Blunt, Blunt mentioned, um, we were able to deduce that Theta chapter was established definitely within 20 because Iota chapter was established on March 25th, 1920 in Atlanta. And that's the chapter just before um, Theta in this case. And then right afterwards, uh, IOTA chapter was established in August of August 17th of 1920 in Atlantic City, New Jersey. And so we see the bookends around uh, Theta chapter being established in that year, recognizing that we know that this chapter was also established in somewhere in that time frame. All righty, on to the next slide. Later on, we see that. Um, Actually, I'm sorry, can you back up please one slide? We didn't hit this slide. Uh, on the establishment of Lambda chapter, I want to actually uh, cover that in a little bit more detail. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I did cover that. Thank you, sir. Next slide. All right, so the reestablishment of um, a chapter at UC Berkeley. So we see the president was reestablished in, on March 9th, 1925 as Epsilon Psi Chapter. This reactivation was the culmination of efforts by Brother Lee uh, L. Purnell. With Supreme Council permission, he was able to uh, grant it permission to organize that chapter back in September of 1924. And Brother Wranglin from Lambda Chapter was a charter member along with him and became the first bosses of that chapter. For the blunt, any comments? Right, you also see on your on the left-hand side, um, only two years after Lambda was established, they got back to UC Berkeley, which gave us another indication that there was some, some interest out there. So again, as we talked about inductive and deductive reasoning, these things kind of make us believe like it was happening. But you'll see that the, the uh, chapter Bosilus was located in Oakland. And on the right-hand side, you'll see that it says it was Berkeley. Now, a lot of the old charters you'll see have different names because they would send the chapter charter to wherever the, uh, the Bosilus was located. As you'll see later on, in the case of Sigma Oda, the chapter was, was established in Oakland, but the Bosilus brother Stratton lived in San Francisco. So San Francisco is on their establishment. You'll see an, um, an, an Alpha Epsilon down there in Tucson. Most of the, the officers were located up here in Phoenix. So I just want to point out that two things. A, after Lambda was established in 1923, Epsilon Psi right back two years later. So it let us know that there was some keen enthusiasm. We're just trying to find out if the guys that established Epsilon Psi were part of the original, the original Theta group. Um, other than that, um, uh, Brother Love, I think you covered everything uh, pretty well on that. Oh, one more thing. 
Epsilon Psi, the last one. You notice this says it was composed of six active brothers and four pledges. So you could establish chapters back then by not having all the brothers being part of the chapter. If you just send in a list of brothers who you're going to initiate it, they would allow you to have a chapter as well. Okay, thank you. Back to you, brother, um, love. Thank you, brother Blunt. Next slide. Okay, so that first discussion was just about chapters being established on the West Coast. You had Theta chapter, and you had Epsilon Psi chapter, and we knew that Lambda chapters were being established uh, in Norfolk, Virginia. Uh, so chapters that were significant to us on the West Coast. Now we'll talk about the district system that being put in place in the evolution of said system. And so in December of 1921, um, Brother Grand J. Austin Atkins became the grand boss, the, the ninth grand bosses of the fraternity. And he made a number of organizational changes to the fraternity. He's credited with reserving Omega chapter for deceased brothers. He's credited with um, the naming convention for graduate and undergraduate chapters, you know, so pairing them together. So when you see alpha chapter, you see the corresponding alpha omega chapter for the graduate uh, peer to that undergraduate chapter. Um, he also um, selected five brothers to organize the fraternity into five geographical districts. And we see that in the Dreer on page 38. The organization of these districts was approved at the 11th conclave in Philadelphia and the district representative was to function as the supervisor, uh, I'm sorry, for under the supervision of the newly created office of vice grand bosses that was established in uh, 22 also. Each district representative was to concentrate on expanding Omega within the coming years. And the first appointees in their jurisdiction uh, at that time was for the first district, uh, Brother Charles White of Cambridge, Massachusetts, who was responsible for the New England states then when for the second, we had Brother Carter Wa uh, Marshall from Washington, D.C., responsible for the Mid-Atlantic States. For the third, we had L. R. Hill from St. Paul, Minnesota, and he was responsible for the Central States. For the fourth, we had Brother William Faulkner of Atlanta, responsible for the Southern States. And for the fifth district, we had um, Brother George L. Vaughn um, from St. Louis, Missouri, responsible for the Western States. And so this, the district representative from each state or from each region was to visit every chapter in that region at least once a year. Um, they were also to go out and uh, have correspondence and interaction with those chapters to make sure that they stayed one financial, stayed active and performed the responsibilities of the um, fraternity. And so at this time we see that California, in this case with its own chapter, was part of the fifth district in 1923. Brother Blunt, any comments? No, brother, you summed that page up pretty well. Thanks, brother. Next slide. So the evolution of that uh, West Coast presence. And so the following year in 1924, the district system expanded from five to 18 districts. And California was placed in the 17th district in 1924 uh, with uh, brother William M. Peters with a Z um, as a district representative. And so a little history about uh, Brother Peters. One, he was initiated at Beta Chapter in 1918. He was the star quarterback for universe or Lincoln University um, from 1918 through 1919. And uh, there were no slaps, as a matter of fact. Lincoln football asserts that um, they won the Central Intercollegiate Athletic Association, the IAA conference in 1918, 19, and 24. However, I asked you to talk to uh, our brother DR Dow about those championships because I know that the conference itself asserts that there were no champions recognized in 18 and 19 because of World War I. And seriously, uh, Brother Peters was a grand keeper of records in the seal in 1919 as a neophyte, so strong brother. Uh, graduated cum laude from Lincoln University in 1920 performed his graduate work at University of Southern California in bacteriology uh, from 1922 through 23, and was a charter member of Lambda chapter and its first boss list in 1923. Brother Blunt, any additional comments? Only thing to point out uh, is that we had one chapter in a district. 
So you'll, you'll see later on as Brother Love talks about the evolution of the, of the fraternity, how Lambda was left out there on its own and, and Epsilon Phi for over 20 years. And again, that is a testament. That is a testament to the perseverance of the brothers in the LA and the Berkeley area. Back to you, Brother Love. Thanks, Brother. Next slide. Continuing that West Coast evolution from 1922 through, I'm sorry, 27 through 32. So between 25 and 26, the district system was reorganized yet again, reduced from 18 to 17 districts, with the former 17th district being consolidated with the 9th district. The 9th district was located where the DR lived, as Brother Blunt mentioned earlier, in Berkeley, California. So California was in the 9th district in 1926. And Brother Lee Julian Purnell was our 9th district DR. He was born in the DC area, but he was raised in the Berkeley, California area. He was a sprinter on the UC Berkeley track team from in 1918 and 1919. He obtained his Bachelor of Arts degree from University of California, Berkeley in 1919. Theta chapter, AKA Epsilon Psi chapter, AKA Epsilon Mu chapter. He was initiated at MIT, Gamma chapter around 1920. He obtained his Bachelor of Science degree from MIT in Electrical Engineering in 1921, obtained his Master's in Electrical Engineering from UC Berkeley in 1929, was the Director of Industries at Wilberforce University, Epsilon Chapter. He was the Head of Electrical Engineering Department and a Professor within that same department at Howard University, Alpha Chapter in 1941, and he retired in 1972. And so as you can see, he was a well-experienced brother among single letter chapters being Theta, Gamma, Epsilon, and Alpha. Brother Bunt, any other comments? Um, just pointing out that another point of our deductive reasoning, our, our historical detective, he was on the track team in 1918 and 19. Uh, and that lets us know that he was possibly a driving force behind Theta. So we're now following his information looking up his, his uh, uh, fraternal DNA to see if he could have been one of the guys who um, um, got the chapter, Theta chapter started in 1920. Everything indicates that, but until we pull up some actual hardcore information on that, uh, we're not going to release that information. Also, he was the founder of Epsilon Psi as well. So we are a few steps away from identifying some of the men who uh, were issued to charter at, um, at Cal Berkeley. Back to you, my love. You got it. And just to finalize this slide, um, the district system was reorganized yet again in 1928, going from 17 to nine districts. And California was reassigned to either the fifth district under um, Brother Howard uh, Payne Carter or the sixth district under Brother Clarence Holmes Jr. This is still being researched. We think it may have been the fifth because we had later um, relationships with uh, Brother Howard uh, Carter but we do not know yet. So like Brother Blunt mentioned, we won't release that until we have some concrete evidence supporting those assertions. Next slide. All right, so the West Coast evolution continued. The, district, the districts were reorganized again in 1933 from nine to 10 districts. The states and the district representatives were reassigned. California was returned to the ninth district were remained there until 1942. So from 1933 until 1942, California was part of the ninth district. And the ninth, the district representatives for the first four years was brother Howard Carter Payne that I mentioned earlier from the fifth. And since he lived in Texas at the time, the ninth was headquartered in Texas as brother uh, Graham Blunt mentioned in terms of where a district lives is where the head is. See, uh, next slide. I'm sorry, before we're there, Brother Blunt, any comments? Oh, thanks a lot, Brother Love. Uh, I was just thinking that I want you guys to start paying attention now because the gentlemen, the brothers that Brother Love is going to highlight, they are all tremendous and outstanding brothers. They are the top of their fields. But again, they are in Texas. Lambda's out here and Epsilon Fire out here in California on their own, no nurturing no tethering. 
no ability to, to grow. That's why in the Lambda case, they were able to grow from the brothers who transferred there, the brothers already made, who transferred to the South. They had an intermediate graduate type environment so they could sustain themselves. These are all our trails that we're following to see what happened to, to Theta, the Theta chapter and why Epsilon Phi finally went out of business uh, uh, as well. So again, these guys that are gonna be highlighted by Brother Love are so detached from us out here in the West Coast um, that you'll just have a better, a better understanding of all the old heads uh, that, that, that stuck it out and persevered. Brother Love, back to you. All right, and last point on the slide, we'll see that the ninth district at the time consisted of not only Texas, but Louisiana, Oklahoma, and California. So that was the makeup of the ninth at that time. Another point, when I was coming up, we always had a special affinity with the ninth district. And I never knew why until I realized we used to be part of the ninth, which talks about before we had some of our first homegrown DRs, most of the DRs that we had in the 12th district were made somewhere else. And they would always deliver is a bad word. They would always make our votes available to their home district. So um, um, until we started making our own DRs here in the 12th district, we were always tethered to another district politically. Also socioeconomically as well. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Brother Love, back to you. Thanks, you, brother. Next slide. All right, as Brother Blunt mentioned, we'll start talking about some of the lineage of the brothers that were leading uh, the districts that the West was aligned to. And so we'll start with um, Brother uh, John Dudley Bowles, the ninth district DR from 1938 through 39. He obtained his Bachelor of Science from this university in 1927, obtained his Master of Arts from University of Kansas in Sociology in 1933, taught science at Harper Junior High School in Houston, Texas, served as the acting dean at Houston College for Negroes from 1938 to 1942. That later became Texas Southern University. He enlisted in the army from 1943 to 45. He obtained his doctor's degree from the Harry Medical College in 1945. And he was initiated at, at, a, at a side chapter. Our brother Reverend Frederick Rivers Barnwell, the DR, I'm sorry, the Dean of DRs was a DR for the West Coast from 1939 to 1941. And he will remain the DR in the ninth long after California departed. He left the DR chair in 1958. Um, he received his Bachelor of Arts degree in 1908, his Doctor of Sacred Theolo Theology in 1911, and his Doctorate of Divinity in 1942, all from Lincoln University. He was ordained in 1911. He was the director of the Negro Health Education uh, Texas Tuberculosis Association from 1919 through 1942. He was a field officer for the American Humane Society from 1915 to 1940. 42, it made enormous contributions to the Humane Society, especially among African-American um, families, especially children, being induced to caring and nurturing animals and treating them humanely. Uh, a lot of um, articles have been written about him and his contributions that are just now starting to be recognized and giving credit to him. Um, he was an assistant pastor at St. Andrew's AME Church in Fort Worth, Texas from 1942 through 57. He was a charter member of Epsilon Alpha Chapter in Fort Worth, Texas, and Bacillus of that same chapter um, in 1943 through 45. Brother Blunt, any comments here? Um, you framed that up very, very well, Brother Love. Now I understand this is the third DR out of Texas that's responsible for helping us out here in California on the West Coast. The only district representative we had was Brother Purnell, Purcell, and he established Epsilon Psi. He, he kept Lambda going. So look at the socioeconomic factors at that time. 1938, 41, there was heavy segregation in the South in Texas. We may have had that on the West Coast, but it may not have been as prevalent. So there was a whole different mindset. There was a whole different socioeconomic basis, maybe 
maybe we didn't fit in. I don't know. I don't know what the case was. But when you look at our DRs with three states away from us, you, you just, there's, there's no reason you see why we, we kept stopping and starting, stopping and starting, stopping and starting. And the only time we happened to grow up until this time was when our DR was right here with us in Cal Berkeley. So that's something to think about when you're, when you're going forward in the rest of this presentation. The socioeconomic, the, 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 just the way of life, the thought process of folks out here in California, as opposed to the folks in the deep south and how they viewed particular things. Back to you, Brother Love. Great points on that attachment, Brother Point. I mean, and to your point, just on the, our last brother here, Brother Cornwell, not only was he the National Mega Man of the Year in 1955, but he was initiated at Theta Chapter, not UC Berkeley, but Theta Chapter. Riley College, Atlanta. correct. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, good point, good point. <laughs> uh, next slide. All righty, West Coast Evolution in 1942. So now we have the current district framework being put in place. Districts are organized, reorganized again, increasing from 10 to 12 districts. The district representatives and states are again reassigned. The 12th district was born and included 11 states, Alaska, Arizona, California, Hawaii, Idaho, Montana, Nevada, Oregon, Utah, Washington, and Wyoming. Now, when Lambda Beta Beta was chartered on June 25th, 1982, as the first chapter in, o in Oahu, Hawaii, it was placed in the 13th district, thus transferring that state of Hawaii to that district. The first district representative for the 12th, the newly formed 12th, was Brother Ralph Augustine Vaughn from 1942-44. He graduated from Armstrong Manual Training High School in 1923. Uh, he attended Howard University from 1923 through 26, obtained his BS from University of Illinois in architecture in 1932. He was a draftsman um, at University Architect's Office at Howard University. He designed the sundial, sundial on the Howard University campus on behalf of the 1929 Manipolis Club as their gift to, the, to that university. He worked for the framed, our famed architect and brother Paul R. Williams from 1937 through 41. He was a set designer for Metro Goldwyn Mayer MGM from 1941-45. He was an architect for the Lincoln Apartments in Los Angeles in 1951. And that's significant because that uh, location is listed in the National Register of Historical Places for its excellence and enduring example for both Garden City property type and the modernistic architecture. Uh, he chartered a uh, Phi, I'm sorry, Pi Psi chapter at the University of uh, Illinois in 1929 and was a keeper of finance and bosses of that chapter. He was initiated at Alpha chapter in 1924. Brother Blunt, any comments on this one? Um, interesting thing here. Thank you, Brother uh, Love. We talk about the establishment of the 12th district, and that is open to interpretation. Um, as Brother Love mentioned in the previous slide, when uh, Lambda chapter, which was considered a district back in those days, and Epsilon Psi, those two chapters were considered a district, um, there was a 17th district. Was that a real district or not? Uh, in 1942, when Brother Vaughn was given the charge to go establish the 12th district, we are gonna give you a district, we're gonna give you some states, and your job is to populate them. That's the, that's the year we traditionally accept is the establishment of the 12th district. Here's your district, 12th district, here are the states, go out and establish them. Some traditionalists hold on to population. Well, when were they really populated? You know, in 1942, wasn't but one chapter, Lambda, that ain't no real district. Again, that's up to you for your interpretation, but traditionally wise for the district purposes, we accept 1942 as the year that the 12th district was technically established. Not prior to that, when Lambda was in the 17th, they were in there by themselves. This year, they actually gave us a framework um, about Hawaii. Tell me why is Hawaii an international district and Alaska is not? I have not been able to answer that question yet. You know, I'm like, okay, so we had Hawaii when it didn't have a chapter in it, the 12th district. Once we established the chapter, military chapter, by the way, God bless them for their service. Once we established the chapter, 
They said, mm, we're going to make that international district. Somebody at HQ don't know their geography. We can get to Alaska a little bit quicker. We can get to Hawaii, really, depending on where you are. If you're from Seattle. So that may be a charge we take up at another time. Um, also, please, guys, put in the Q&As. I'm seeing a couple of questions here from, from, um, uh, from, from Rome and from another brother. Uh, but I'll, I'll just take one of the question answers first, if you don't mind, Brother, uh, brother Love, right now, because it's Jermaine. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is from brother, brother Michael Smith. He said there's a misprint in the articles mentioned Epsilon Psi and then Epsilon Phi. What should it be? Good question. As I mentioned, the, the pre-1947 history of the West Coast is very sketchy. Uh, they just was misprints. You'll notice that later on in the presentation, they mentioned Phi Iota chapter is, um, is uh -huh. I think it was. Yes. So there was some misprints there that would throw you off, which again, allows you to dig and dig and dig. So prior to 1945, 47, I would even say, the history of the West Coast, it's, it's a struggle trying to turn it up because there was only one or two chapters out here. Nobody really cared, really. Then the war came and his brother I love, we'll see in the next slide, the war came and again, all the, all the manhood wound up going to military and the chapter suffered. Back to you, brother love. Thank you, brother Glenn. And you also mentioned a great point on why would Hawaii be placed in the 13th? Now, if you talk to military bros, they're familiar with the concept of CONUS or CONUS, continental United States and outside the continental United States. Mm. We're a fraternity, right? We're not a military organization. And the Supreme Council established that Hawaii was part of this district. So yeah, it's still a mystery as to why it was separated when that first chapter was established, uh, Land of Beta Beta. Next slide. All right, so the state of uh, 12th district in 1945 was not so good. There was no growth in terms of new chapters since 1925. Epsilon Psi had become inactive uh, as of 1936. Uh, Lambda chapter was inactive, believe it or not, and looking to be revived in 1946 through the efforts of district representative brother James Perry Jr. Uh, any other comments on this slide, Brother Blunt? Other than the war. The, you know, most even even the HBCUs chapters went inactive during this particular period of time. And I want to mention too, I don't know if he's on the call or not though, but Brother John Van, who I had the pleasure of being in Sigma Oda with, he is a living member of Epsilon Psi. I spoke to him last Saturday. So we still do have a brother here uh, with us um, that, that was made in Epsilon Psi. So he carries, he carries that legacy on with him. All right, go ahead, Brother Love. And great point on, on the war also there, good Brother Blunt. Um, given that we were out here so far removed, one, that was one big strike. But another big strike on the West Coast was we had no historically black colleges and universities to be a natural feeder system to the fraternity to give us that lifeblood of new members, you know, like they did east of the Mississippi. And so definitely a very challenging time for this district during those times. Um, and then as Brother Blunt mentioned, we'll see as the war progressed, that being uh, a large number of African-American men coming out West, um, thus being fertile um, population of folks who could populate the chapter, chapters uh, and have us grow. So next slide. Ah, the West Coast turnaround. And this was, like I said, led by uh, DR's Julian Bell and uh, James uh, Perry Jr. Uh, let's see here. For Brother Bell, our research shows that um, he received his um, Bachelor of Arts at Tennessee uh, A&I State College um, in 1928, his Master of Arts from the University of Michigan in 1943. He was a professional baseball uh, player, a pitcher uh, for the Negro Southern uh, League of Knoxville Giants in 1920. He was also in the Negro National League, uh, the Detroit Stars in 1924, and the Memphis Red Sox in 1928. And lastly, the Louisville White Sox in 1931. Uh, he was an educator from elementary uh, school through college. Um, he was a coach at Fisk University, uh, director and coach at Lane College and Knoxville College. Uh, officially appointed DR by the Grand Bosses in February of 1945 after the resignation of brother DR Ralph Vaughn. He later resigned his position in 1946, accepting a position, that coaching position at Fisk University. 
he was the bosses of a uh, uh, Data Iota chapter in Jackson, Tennessee, and he was initiated at Delta chapter around 1946. Uh, to follow him when he resigned was brother uh, James Perry Jr. And again, he took over the helm with the departure of brother B.R. Bell. Brother Blunt, any comments on this slide? Um, not really a fraternity comment. Just want to mention for you, just, uh, just off the record, uh, Tennessee A and I, which is now Tennessee State, they have the the recognition of providing the first black quarterback drafted to the NFL as a quarterback. I take it back; it was the AFL. The Oakland Raiders, back in '67, I think it was, drafted Eldridge Dickey from Tennessee A and I as a quarterback, not as a running back, not as a wide receiver, not as a defensive back. And at the conclave in New Orleans, I ran into a brother who played with him. So it had nothing to do with the frat stuff other than the connection with the brother I spoke to, but Tennessee A and I, AKA Tennessee State has a reputation of sending the first black person to the, to the AFL that was drafted as a quarterback. I know that's off the, off the track, but thank you for that point of personal privilege, brother love. Hey, man, good stuff to go. Next slide. All right, so uh, the planned growth of 12th District uh, to Brother Blunt's uh, point of that post-World War II resurgence. Uh, we saw that there was an establishment of, you know, going from no chapters being established uh, or being active in 1945 to now having five chapters with this uh, startup of Lambda chapter back in LA, uh, Sigma Iota in San Francisco. Um, as Brother Blunt mentioned, uh, the article in the Oracle in 1947 says, Chi Iota, which should have been Phi Iota in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, and then also there was Alpha Epsilon in uh, Tucson, Arizona. So again, a, a lot of growth started to happen with the war uh, starting and more of African-American men that naturally migrated to the fraternity becoming members of the fraternity uh, in this location. Um, also, we had a uh, Brother Founder uh, Love make a trip out to the West Coast, uh, one of his first, uh, and, and toured up and down and kind of saw, uh, one, the current plight of the attorney and encouraged us to make that growth happen. Brother Blunt, any other comments on, on this slide? Uh, two just quick ones. Uh, 11th District, a lot of folks asked me all the time what happened to them. The, there were two chapters in the 11th District, uh, I believe it was, one in Denver and I think one in West Virginia, I can't remember exactly, and the DR, was in the military and they could not catch up with him. They didn't know if he was alive or dead, what was going on. So they dissolved the 11th district, even though the Lambda chapter and Epsilon Psi chapter were inactive, they still had connection with some people out here. So they were kept up to date. So that's why the 11th district was initially dissolved uh, in the bulletin. It said that they had no contact with the DR. They didn't know what was going on um, uh, out that particular way. Um, uh, also, I had something else, but I forgot it now, man. I'll come back to it, You're old and forgetful. Back to you, brother. Thank you, brother. Uh, next slide. This slide just kind of highlights what was just mentioned on the previous slide that, okay, we had, we went from, um, in, as recognized in the Oracle in May, 1946, uh, there being just one chapter on the West Coast and that chapter was inactive. Um, to now there being five chapters uh, being established. Uh, and that Lambda chapter um, was revived and now had over 50 brothers in it. And then again, we had Phi Order chapter become a dominant uh, figure on the West Coast also. Um, so definitely that, that growth of the 12th district taking off and being sustained uh, going forward. Uh, any other comments on this slide, Brother Blunt? Um, not to know that if you guys notice where the chapter offices lived. Mm -hmm. The, the Alpha Epsilon chapter in Tucson, all the officers were in, were in Phoenix. And that's the point I was going to make. In uh, 1947, a year after AE was established, the men of Arizona State College petitioned headquarters to form an Omega chapter at Arizona State College in 1947. The response, and we have that in writing, and I think that, that'll be in uh, the updated version of the history book, a response from the uh, Grand Keeper of, of records, and, uh, records and Seal um, stated that, well, you guys already got a chapter in Arizona. Y'all just, just have a joint chapter. Little did they realize 
Tucson was 135 miles away from Phoenix. And back in the 40s, that was probably a day's drive. So most of the officers and most of the guys who came through Arizona State were made in Alpha Epsilon. If you look uh, at the Oracle 1947 copy, you look at all the Alpha Epsilon, <laughs> Basilai and KRSs are located in Phoenix. So um, it, it, Alpha, Arizona State did not get a chapter again until 1969 when they originally petitioned in 1947, just because they didn't know anything about the West Coast and they didn't know the, uh, the geography. Back to you, Brother Love. Thank you, Brother Blunt. And, and to your point about, and it, there's a nice number of comments being mentioned in, in the chat that we definitely appreciate and recognize. Uh, and some of these will be uh, follow up on with future things that we already have planned. And so I just want to mention a couple here just because they're, they're germane. Uh, my brother mentioned that uh, Brother uh, Paul Williams also designed, uh, was the architect for the St. Jude's Hospital in Memphis. And I mean, there are at least um, almost a hundred or more places in California alone that he was architect for, including the airport at Los Angeles. Um, so just, just a number of, of facilities that he played a key role in. So uh, definitely stars, many of our, our most popular stars like uh, Lucia Ball, uh, Desi Arnaz, and those, their mm -hmm. family homes, just a That's number correct. of them inside. Also around the corner from my house where I was raised in San Francisco to visit Darrow. He designed a mansion in mm -hmm. Pacific. Also, uh, Brother Lewis was kind enough to send me some pictures of the Golden State Mutual Building in Los Angeles, yes. where they have a whole big mural of him. But you are you are correct. Now, what's interesting about Brother Williams, other than being the first person, first black man attended to the, uh, I think it was the Academy of Architects, he learned how to draw backwards, upside down. So he would be across the table. He wouldn't be next to his white counterpart. So that's a good, that's a good heads up. You guys know your history. Good stuff. To I say Rome has a couple more questions, but I'll, I'll answer those about uh, the chapter in Canada and the whistle when we finish the program because we uh, we have about ten minutes left, I believe. Ah, Maybe less. Great, great point. Okay, we'll we'll go to the next slide. This last this is the last slide. Slide. So next slide. This kind of just highlights the DRs that we've covered so far. Um, the majority, of the first um, one so far that were um, in the 12th district, and this was published in the 12th district newsletter back in 1969. Uh, you also notice that John C. Long, the longest serving DR in our district, Iota Gamma. Where was Iota Gamma? Fresno State. One of the founders of Iota Gamma just passed last year with COVID, Brother Jesse Perry. I had an opportunity to talk with him extensively. He was a member of Sigma Order before he passed. Where is Iota Gamma now? If you all know our friend Eric Lewis down here in LA, Trenton State. They moved out of Gamma to Trenton State and they moved Epsilon Psi to Wichita State. Um, other than that, Brother Love, um, I think we can go to question and answers now. Yes, good brother. Let's do that. Okay, let me answer Rome's uh, second question, uh, first one, about the, 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 uh, the, the Tennessee State and the Canes. I don't think that was a fraternity practice. That may have been a chapter practice, but we've seen nothing, nothing in our research that shows that the canes was something that the bras used. Uh, and in, in deference to our, our, our DR, uh, our brother Dow, beta chapter, when they sing their hymn, they perform something, they swing their legs. That's something that everybody knows beta is known for, but that's not a fraternity adapted uh, policy. Um, linking up, some chapters did, some chapters didn't in public. So these are things, brother Mubarak, that was probably a, a chapter thing uh, and, and not a fraternity adjusted thing. Um, the whistle, uh, one of our committee members, Brother David Carl, out of the first district, Gamma chapter, he turned up a 1919 ritual. We don't know if it was ratified or not, it didn't say, but it had two instances where a whistle was used. And I'm gonna be careful, I know we're on a secured site, but I, I gotta be careful. Uh, in two parts of the process, a whistle was used. Now, back in the day, we had a brother, it might've been Brother Dent, I'm not sure. Brother Dent, who was our fourth district representative, was one of Sigma Order before he passed in Oakland. He was a very known attorney there. But somebody came, old head, and was talking about the Omega whistle. And we guffawed him, bro, you know, Alzheimer's, bro, you know, it ain't no Omega whistle. But it makes reference to it in our ritual but today, you don't know where it is. I did talk to several brothers that said their dad used to always 
whistle when they got in trouble. He'd give a certain whistle. But again, we have no we have no written verification of that. But yes, there was a whistle in a 1919 ritual. That ritual was not, we couldn't verify if it was authenticated or if it was ratified or not, but it was mentioned to it. Chapter in Canada, 1924, McGill College, Sigma chapter. Interesting scenario. That's where Brother Drew got his medical degree from, Sigma. Was there a connection? We're working on that now. But yes, in 1924, Sigma chapter was our first international uh, chapter. Um, any other questions you want to handle, Brother uh, Brother Love? Anything in the chat? Uh, yeah, there's a couple of comments. So uh, uh, shout out to uh, Brother Dr. Capehart. So great point in terms of the CONUS OCONUS, right? So Alaska and Hawaii are considered OCONUS. And, but we in the fraternity, we have Alaska in the 12th and Hawaii outside of 12th. So it's a great, great point. Oh, another good brother, point from Brother my, Drew, man. Good, good to let me know about brother, brother Carson Amos, man. You got to put us in touch with him. We need to put him in our history book. Uh, brother Higgs, yes. I, I think he was at that meeting when, when Brother Dent came in and we hooted him out. I think you were there, but he was initially an Alpha Chapter guy. Uh, Danny White, thank you. Yes, Rashia Fellows, who we lost a couple of years ago, well known Phoenix architect. Um, anything else you want to touch on, Brother Love? I think I covered yeah. all that. Last one I would is uh, to Brother White again. He's right on point with uh, Brother Z. Alexander Luby. That, that one, we have a nice amount of material that we've researched that we're putting together into a nice presentation, very similar to the one that was done on Brother Jay Austin Atkins. Um, powerful brother and, and father to the 12th district, also. You know, so definitely look forward to that one forthcoming, also. Ah, brother Clement, good to see you, my brother. See, everybody don't remember I served with you on the Supreme Council. Everybody remember your name. Good to see you, man. Much love. Can't wait to, to get with you when you come out west of USC, brother. We'll take care of you. Okay, now we're going to the uh, to the Q&A, outside time, we're pretty good on time. Um, Brother Love, I'll punt this to you because you're gonna tell them how to respond. All right. Listening. Brothers, we have a, a few questions just to kind of ask you here. Uh, most of from the material that we just covered, give you a chance to, to see what you've retained and remind you of what uh, the facts were. So we'll start off with um, what was the first chapter, I'm sorry, what was the first chapter established on the West Coast? And I'll have you respond in the poll. Poll, please. Open the poll, please. You have nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Pins down. All righty. And polls are closed, and results are. I'm going to cut back in about 20 minutes, babe, okay? The majority of you said theta chapter, and that is correct. Very, very tough. Now, again, trick question. Established. Established. So that was a trick question. Lambda or theta would have been acceptable in that particular case because lambda was established. Theta was the first chapter chartered. But that was a trick question. OK. Didn't want to give everybody to get 100%, so we threw that in there. <laughs> Next question. What district did California belong to in 1924? Polls open. We have nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. For all your school teachers, pins down. <laughs> Polls are now closed and the results are the ninth district. Mm. Brother Love. Uh, 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 in 1924, we were part of the 17th district. The 17th the district. district. Lambda was our district. Mm -hmm. And again, Epsilon Psi was 25. So they, they were still in organization. So Lambda was a district of his own mm -hmm. in 1924. And it was close. It was a 50% to 46%. 46% of you guys got it right on point. Very, very close. All righty. Next question. Who was the first brother to serve as a district representative over California? Open the polls. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 
and pins down. Excellent. Holes are now closed and the results are excellent. Yes. So the William Peters uh -huh. thing was that first uh, DR over California. Not okay. as the 12th district, but over California. That was a key point there. All right. Very, good. Very good. Again, now you see why history is so important by having back backup. We don't do no Betty Crocker stuff, you know, because you can listen, you can look, but if you don't dig deeper, you're thrown off. Brother Love, go ahead. All right. Next question. What district was California in in 1927? Given that previous question, hopefully you got that answer. Okay. So we have 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, pins down. Perfect. Holes are now closed, and the results are the ninth district. Very good, very good. Excellent. All right, and our last question is not on the material, but something about our district as most of you should know today. And so who was the first DR initiated in the 12th for the 12th? Polls open. If he was the last one up until 1978, I think maybe. I can't, 79, I can't remember. Okay, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, pins down. Excellent. Polls are now closed. And the results are, ah, well, fine, interesting, very interesting, but not the correct answer. Um, <laughs> you're right, I mean, Brother, Brother Vaughn, Let's see here, was made at Atlanta Omicron in 1946. Um, however, the first one, and actually, uh, Brother Vaughn, he was. Uh uh, Brother Vaughn was named, was made at uh, Alpha, Alpha Chapter. Yeah. Okay, so we need to check with ICU's history because they have that incorrect also. So, great, great point on that one. What we do have is that uh, Brother Lan uh, James Perry. James Perry. Atlanta chapter. And I reckon. Next yeah. one wasn't made until 85 with J. Dub, Jewett, uh, but the DR Jewett Walker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that all goes into what we talked about, how our district was always helping some other district and, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm looking at the time, man. We are we got three minutes, man. I want to take this opportunity to, to thank all the brothers that participated. This is the first part. The second part will be a little bit longer. I'm working with I'm working with the uh, the Dig IT team. We're going to take our history weekend that we used to have at Fiota, and we're going to put on this virtual basis. So you'll be able to get four or five hours of history. You'll get more information for that uh, as I run it through the uh, through Brother Dow's DR's office. So I'll punt it back to um, to Brother Love so we can close this out. All right, Brother Blunt, thank you again, brothers. You've heard a good summary of the evolution of the fraternity going west and the 12th district. It's been a story journey with a lot of successes and challenges along the way. While we're still in our infancy and our journey, each one of you are part of that moving finger writing our beloved story. So Brother Blunt, I definitely want to just tip my hat, um, get on my knee and just thank you for your sustained service to the fraternity. It's just as important, your sustained commitment to discovering and sharing the history of our great fraternity for us here now and for those after us to a benefit from. So just thank you again so much. And brothers that attended, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to learn more about something that we all love and treasure dearly. And please learn and discover more and share that with all of us. So with that, thank you, brother. Love. Close. All right. Brother uh brother love and brother grand uh outstanding job. Um can, can the brothers hear me all right? Yes. Yes, sir. All right, good. Uh, I'm just setting up. I'm um, outside in my yard now because I know we're preparing for the purple smoke. So um, I wanted to just jump back on real quick and say, brothers, outstanding job. I'm getting text messages from across the country, brothers who uh, chimed in. Uh, my good friend, uh, Brother Blodgen, out of the first district, the district representative, 
said you made his day with your answer about the 11th district. He said he's been chasing that for the last 18 years, trying to figure <laughs> out what happened. So uh, thank you, Brother Grant. Uh, is Brother Jones, uh, is Brother Melvin Jones available? I'm here, Brother. All right, Brother Jones, let me turn it over to you. Greetings, brothers. So as has been said a couple of times here, brothers, this was an outstanding session. Um, I'm not going to reveal my scores from the quiz, but, you know, hopefully brothers did much better than myself. Uh, we certainly appreciate Brother Graham Blunt, Brother Darrell Love for all the, the great information that they brought forward to us. Um, we're continuing rolling tonight. We have our Purple Smoke session starting up at eight o'clock. So as we saw, Brother Dow is setting up his smoking station. Uh, Brother, we encourage you to log back in at eight o'clock tonight for that. Relative to tomorrow, we have um, a number of activities scheduled for tomorrow. So again, just to kind of um, give you a refresher, tomorrow morning, we start out our morning early with uh, Brother uh, District Chaplain, Brother Brown, um, in, involving us in a Bible study first thing in the morning. So be sure to come feed your spirit. First thing in the morning, seven o'clock. We also have our talent hunt competition that starts at 4 p.m. So we absolutely want to make sure that we log into that and um, take heed to the, the talented youth from across the district. The show is phenomenal. I will tell you that. So make sure to log in for talent hunt tomorrow at four. The memorial service starts tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. And then we have the gold toast and or the mixologist that will come and help us to understand how to make a few libations at 8 p.m. So full slate tomorrow, uh, starting at 7 a.m. and then picking back up at 4 p.m. We're looking forward to everyone logging back in and joining us for more, um, more fellowship, more uh, feeding of body, spirit, and soul. Thank you, brothers.